Uh, Alright, we'll call this meeting to order. Select board meeting for November 6, 2019. And we can jump right into our consent agenda. We have some words to approve to start our meeting tonight. ADP 2016, ADP 2016-2, ADP 2016-S, ADP 2017-S, ADP 2017-S, AAP 2018, AAP 2018, PR 2019B, and PR 2010. We also have a Shawal APR, reauthorization sign, conservation restriction, co-hold order agreement, and that we need to be re as one of the legal, legal entities change from an individual, individual to an LLC, and as was previously, previously approved by, by town meetings, meetings like the board, board and, and conservation commission. Can I have a motion to approve? So, so moved. Okay. okay. Um, was it favor? Aye. 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 It was, it was the, the change, change from, from individual, individual to an LLC. LLC. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Just, just change the legal LLC, LLC so it had to be re oh, 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 oh. Yeah. yeah. And then, and then we, have we have our public, public comment, comment period. period. If anyone is here for public, public comment, comment uh, we can allow 15 minutes, minutes for that. that. We, we have three minutes, minutes per person. person. Are we going to be here for public comment? No. Okay. Can move right in. One of, One of our select, select board, board members is going to be, be here. He's running a little late, so, so. Um, I, I assume. assume. Uh, okay. okay, we could, we could just start, start with the Rocky, Rocky Hill Road, Road property, property complaints. complaints. I, don't I don't know if anyone, anyone is here, here for that. that. You guys, you guys are, are here, here for that? that? Okay, okay, great. great. And um, did you guys, you guys also see that, that the Board of Health, Health has sent a letter out to the owner at 130 Rocky Hill Road? Uh, just, just notifying, notifying them, them of the Indian improvements they have, have to make within, within 30, 30 days or else, or else um, they'll, they'll, they'll make a criminal, criminal complaint against, against the, the owner. owner. Are you, Are you aware, aware of that? That, that, that letter, letter went out. That, that went out, I believe, on October 28th. So, so the it's, I don't, I don't know. know. It says on the letter, letter. Who, 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 who may, may make concern. concern. So, so I'm, I'm not, not quite sure. sure. I think there, there was some problems figuring out who the owner was. Yeah. So, so that was just some. So after, after I met with you, I talked to the building inspector and the board of health, and the building inspector does acknowledge that you flow off the mark responding to your complaint. Um, there, there is an issue of uh, legal ownership of the property because apparently somebody has passed away. away. Um, and, and find, find the, the next, next can can and do that paperwork. paperwork. But, but that, that doesn't control all the property owner from, from the responsibility to address, address these health, health issues. issues. So, so the building inspector is going to be working, working on this board, board health authority issue uh, uh, and an order, order which, which is enforceable in court. court. So, so, so that, that, that's, that's what we've done right, right now. now. You, uh, just to follow up a question, my name, what are the details of the letter? It says it includes all the components that we submitted on behalf of the board of health. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm not sure. sure. This, this is from, from the board of health, health, so it's a uh, uh, structural, structural elements and elimination of uh, rubbish in the cover of a container, uh, collection, collection of six unregistered vehicles, vehicles, including a boat. Rubbish storage and collection, container, container open, open and uncovered, uncovered creating an environment, environment for collection of water, water. and then and maintenance of area, maintenance of area with accumulation of rubbish and uncovered, uncovered container. container. Yeah, yeah, they say the, the same, same thing. thing. Two, Two trees, trees that are uprooted and hung up by the trees creating hazards for possible, possible injury. injury. I could, could give, give you a copy of this, too. too. Are you sure? sure. Would you guys like this, though? Do you have a copy? I have, have a e e no, 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 
and this is her son, son Stevie Wallace. Wallace. And he's, and he's still, still living, living over there. there. W -A -L -I, -S. I, know I know she, she has, has a daughter, daughter who is currently in Florida, Florida. and her name is Rosie as well. well. Um, but, but I don't, I don't know, know whether there's a, a, another year because they, they, there, there was, was a son that died by the name of Robbie, Robbie. And, and he had, had a wife and daughter. daughter. And so, and so I, I don't know, know whether they're, they're also involved and, and the daughter may be an heir, but the person that's living over there is Steve Wallace. Nobody that it might, might be, be in probate, probate court. court. Right. Yeah. And, and I mean, that's, that's not, not under our purview, purview to, to go, go and look into, into probate, probate court. court. Um, I mean, this, this, is, this, is, this, is, this is, this is, this is, I was, I was just going to say, this is the best, best we can do, do right, right now, is issuing these things, things and, and that, 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 that would go to the legal review being handled by building the inspector and board of health. You know, what do you have our direct Select board. Well, the board of health, health are elected elect officials. officials, so, so they're, they're, it's under their, their purview in this, in this bylaw, whereas in the, the building inspector is the person that carries forward the uh, laws and things, things like that, that, that at the NGP, so what do we call it? Code enforcement, 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 enforcement official. official. So, so he's, he's directed, directed by the select board and, and the planning board, board, board and, and the board, board of health, health to address these matters. Uh, uh, they're, 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 they're the, the ones, ones that are covering, covering this, this right, right now, now will be in, in the hands, hands of the Board of Health. Can I let her be sent to the estate of Pat Hattersley? Because she, she is, is the owner. owner. She is the, the woman who passed. Yeah, that we need with the Board of Health. Health. The, 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 the Board of Health is referred to the Board of Health. So the question is, you know, if there's a health health record, if it's a handling estate, if it's a certain estate, attorney, Right, right. So that's, uh, that's not under our purview either. Because yeah. yeah. I saw so them link the house together, together, and my assumption is they were. Days after Pat had, had, had died, died. Mm -hmm. that, that I, I saw, saw them. So, so I'm, I'm sure they're, they're trying, trying to get, get the estate settled. settled. So, so a letter went to the estate. Mm -hmm. whoever, whoever they hired, hired their lawyer, lawyer should, should be able to tell you who owns the house. You know, again, that's not under our purview. And I know. Two board of health meetings every Tuesday at 7 p.m. I think it's right across the hall here. I don't know if there's a schedule for that. Oh, okay. We attended that. You did? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's just been 20 some years or something like that. Oh, wow. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
that one of those things, and I know that so I don't know if you have had anything regarding this, it's kind of just this, uh, this bus issue has, has, has kind of brought it to that level where, you know, it's raised where it is in the town where that, 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 that danger is possibly for the first student, so I don't know if there's anything they can do. Yeah, so we uh, acquired 97 Bus Street, which is directly next to the S1 Cafe, and I'm currently working with uh, Harold Keen and uh, our Project Design Group and our Architectural Insights. So we've been working together, together the last couple of months, months. Um, and we intend and to uh, be at the next uh, planning board meeting, meeting, the next scheduled planning board meeting with the site review, which would allow for both our parking. parking from S-Long, if there's any, to uh, safely park, park at, at a nice Street or anything next to S-Long Cafe, which would be the issue on the common, thus preserving the historic value of the common. Uh, that's what it is, a bunch of parking signs and such. And so, so, yeah, and I think I do apologize for the, uh, this issue, but we are actively working on it. I think the best possible people um, in this area, area to, to help with the situation because it is very delicate, delicate having like customers uh, park, park in a different, different lot and safely walk, walk over um, to that day. Uh, so, uh, as, as I mentioned, I do intend to handle uh, the list. list. Um, another, another question, question I do have, have is uh, I, I actually live on, on the common, which, which is uh, we live on one of the West Street with my family, mm -hmm. uh, and I don't know where, where, where that, that kindergarten is picked up. up. I, I, and they're a quarter of a mile from S1. Okay. So, um, that I, I, I do understand that there's an issue, issue but I think they <coughs> don't have cars parked on the, the common at 18 morning or around 3, 3 3.30 and the kids get dropped off. So, so um, I, I think that, that the issue here is relative to, to this is part of the common in general. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This, this was, was completely from, from the bus drivers. So I, 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 Coming off of Route, route 9, nine all the way to the town of Williams, and we need to put some no parking signs on both sides off of Route 9, at least 50 feet back. Fire truck can't get down here, cruisers can't get down here, and then anyone else can get down here. So the issue is this is restriction issue. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's not, not the bus trying to park on the common. Yeah, yeah. So the only thing that I have a question from your statement Accidents. Um, as, as far, far as, as I'm aware, they have zero to, to do with our and and they're related to, to the river and the I and people turning left down towards the river. river. So, so hey, 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 I have, I have been at an intersection, turning left, as I talked about at home station, at the end of the West Street Vale, and it's totally congested and you can't get through with a pickup. I'm not denying that at all. I'm denying that, 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 that there's, there's an access that's related, related to it. To it. <coughs> so, so that's the only thing. I don't know if any of them are related to it or not. And if you want to get that technical blood, we need to make a decision and put the park up. So, so yeah. all four of those are just So, so since, since he's working, working on, on a solution, uh, and, and I assume the next one's the next planning board meeting. Two weeks. So, we're looking at. In the, in the month, month really, in order, order to have, have a resolution. So, and then they'll know the timing as well. Yeah. Yes. Yes. How many people are there? there are there there are there there no, people still. Well, well I mean, my intention is that no one are there right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I think they got a headline to know that also the number of health and why all of a sudden this is affecting 121 West Street. Sorry, 121 West Street. 121 West Street. Okay, thank you. So, if you can't get through your pickup, I just imagine you're going to get a bus through. If you don't understand the length of the bike, I do. I do. No, no, they don't turn around and come and go the other way. There's no path to drive through that street. I stand up for all the stuff. David, why don't you finish your sentence down there? 
I was just gonna say, <laughs> since, since we're working, working on it, uh, let, let's, let's give him a chance, chance to figure out a solution. solution. So that so way, why not step in on his business in the area by just throwing no parts on the side of the common. common. And, and then, if you decide that, that you know, I think the month or whatever, if you want to prohibit parking on all the common, unless there's some event going on there. And we could do that, that and then, then avoid, avoid the issue, issue of putting, putting no parking signs, signs all along the common. If we just, we just did a bylaw, yeah, 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 keep it neat, clean, clean, and we wouldn't have to have, have no parking signs in 25 feet around. Yeah, yeah, yeah I, I, I agree. agree. We might want to do something, something on a temporary basis, basis right. so, so that, that people, people get the picture that sure, there's a little bit of parking, you know, in your lot there, not on the common. But personally, I would rather not see no parking signs. Right, 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 right. I would greatly appreciate if the board would consider it or not on the vote. coming from Amherst and all of a sudden they want to take a turn down West Street in the mix of all the traffic right there also. So you've got them going this way and that way and the traffic's trying, trying to go, go both ways. ways. Yeah. Yeah. So, so the, the whole total, total area, area is, 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 I don't, I don't know, know what's wrong with the first story. It is. I'm certainly not, you know, aiming. <laughs> 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 you know, we're, we're trying to work with you too yeah. so that we can make things right, right for you. I David, can, can we, we find, find out, out if this is the, uh, if, if that, that is, is the address, address that he talked talk about, about or if there's another thing you didn't do? Yes. Uh, just coming up now. Just give you a quick question. I'm going to be most concerned about the bus train from Route 9 left on the West Street. That's where I'm going to go. Take it down. Yeah, yeah. That's not interesting. We're trying to go across the Route 9. posed at the public forum for the special town meeting warrant as to whether we could expedite the sale on uh, what is required for the sale to go through. So I had a long conversation with council about on it uh, because we're talking about the ball field and because it's covered by Article 97 protection, we do have to have a positive vote of the town meeting tomorrow night. Um, we also need to have a vote of the Conservation Commission. That was something that we didn't know about before. So the Hadley Conservation Commission also needs to vote on this. So tonight, in order to get this ball rolling, and this is going to take a little while for this whole process to play out. And when I say a while, thinking months, not weeks. 
um, that we should take a vote tonight to forward this to, assuming a positive result of uh, tomorrow night's uh, vote on uh, Article 97, forward this to the Conservation Commission and authorize forwarding this to our legislative delegation for their action. Uh, and uh, that's a vote you can take tonight to shave a little bit of time off of it. So moved. Second for discussion. Uh, did they, they said we can't sell it with the Article 97 protection on there, despite what the initial opinion was? I, I, I approached town council and just said I was very, very confused because we'd heard this, we'd heard that, and so we spent quite a bit of time walking through the process. Who was the he? That would be Sharin Everett, uh, who's the whiz at, uh, at uh, land uh, uh, law, and uh, Joel Bart. And the original opinion came from? The, the original opinion was that we couldn't sell it yes, from I mean, Joel Bard, and then Joel okay. Bard said that well, other towns do it. So this was, it was within the same firm? Yeah. That we had got conflicting? Yeah. Yes. Or maybe it was my misunderstanding of what's being said. Oh, and who, you, you had someone check into it also. But yeah, said, Tom, 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 Tom Reed. Reed. Tom, Tom Reed, Reed. Yeah. who said it couldn't be sold. And yeah. then that's where, that's where we were tie score 2-4-2 two, two against. Mm. <laughs> so we really need a ruling in writing. Yeah. If we were to try to sell it with the protection still in place, who is the deciding authority that would say yes or no at the time of closing? It would be the town. We have go a to court, right? Yes. Yeah, I mean, challenge. what was the case in Westfield? That was the big one that this kind of brought this all up, right? And yeah. it was Westfield versus um, was it the state of Massachusetts or something like that. I forget what the case yeah. was. Yeah, it, it was Westfield. Uh, uh, I forget what the Westfield. case was, though. Yeah. Um, but that was the kind of one we were looking at for this. Yeah, I'm. I'm not sure how the enforcement of this would occur. Okay. Um, uh, Mr. Hieronymus wants to have the property and wants to have that sure. property without any kind of uh, uh, question of, as to ownership or use. Mr. Hieronymus, can I, um, you talked about putting it in possibly 61B, right. um, you know, if this were to go through, if we removed the Article 97 protection, can you, I guess, reassure the people watching at home that that is the intention to keep it as open space, space so that, way that way on town town the floor tomorrow night when the question comes, comes up, so we can, can you know, from the assessment. That's definitely the intention, and anybody really, really, really going to propose those. Okay, okay. If you had had an Article 97, that would have been a 61. I just thought it would be a lot easier if the Article 97 had had a transition. Right, right. It would be easier. And then that would be a did that come from the attorneys using 61 Because that's just general. Property over 5 acres. I'm not sure if this is wise. I don't know. We'll be way around it. We'll be the restriction on it. Yeah. We'll be able to put a conservation or a restriction on it. So you'd, so you'd be open, open to, to some, some sort of, sort of conservation, conservation restrictions, some sort of preservation right. that would... It's from the outset, it's never been my intention to okay. do anything in the field other than use it for grass park. I just want to be able to answer the questions I know are going to come up tomorrow night. So. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, <coughs> Mr. Hieronymus, I think that, uh, that if I may speak for the board, that we're, we're willing to work with you to make this uh, deal happen. It just seems that uh, there's a legal process that's going to take a while for, to unfold. Um, and if you have any questions, feel free to get in touch with me and okay. we can talk about that. But we're going to try to move it along as quickly as possible. Correct. Right, okay. which is why I'm recommending you take the vote tonight. Yeah. yeah, conditions. <coughs> okay, uh, Jane. So the buzz from the seniors is that someone deeded this land to the town. And the town is now trying to overcome a gift. And just putting that out there for you. Well, we did that with the church of field. That was a gift. So, so let's uh, vote on this. But I have two other issues to bring up. So, all those in favor of 
the recommendation to petition the legislature for Article 97 if it passes tomorrow. And, and send, send it to uh, Conservation Commission. Yeah, as well. So we already did it. Oh, all those in, we didn't vote. All those in favor. Aye. 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 And then two other things I have is. John? No. Oh, no, okay. Uh, two other things I have is uh, what are, this process is going to take a while, so do we have money in our budget to keep the building for the winter? No. Um, so we're going to have to find that from somewhere. And then, two, if, what are we doing if this doesn't pass tomorrow? Are we talking about that right now? That's, that's the other thing. I think the. Uh, and we could vote right now, that might put some pressure on the meeting. All right. Well, we've already voted that if we didn't get rid of it by the end of the year, that we'd tear it down. Yes. And so, as far as I'm concerned, that's that's the remaining option here because we've, we've exhausted all the possible options. <coughs> we've, uh, we're going to ask the townspeople tomorrow to let us um, fix the building and put it to a new use uh, with Mr. Hieronymus. Yeah. Uh, Unless the either of the two. Uh, Gentlemen have bid on it. Want to change their proposal? Yeah, but then we're going to be doing this for years. We're and not years. doing it anymore. Yeah, we, we did. This, this is it. Going on for we're done. We're absolutely done. Listen, After 15 years, the I'm building done. and a little piece of property was all that was for sale to begin with. Right. And they kept bidding on them with the field. Yes. After they knew that the field was not available. Oh. We were trying to make it available for them. And this seems like a very nice solution to keep everybody happy. So we already okay. taking a vote. That's Let's where we are. We don't need to take a vote, but we those are did. the concerns. Yeah, we did take we a vote. We already took a vote. vote. So yeah, we had a non-binding referendum that supported it and a unanimous, I believe, unanimous vote, right? Did you vote for that? No, no, no. no. OK, no. four to one vote. We'll tear, tear it down yeah. by the end of the year. I mean, yeah. what are we going to do? Yeah. Okay. okay, let's move on. So, Thank you, Mr. Chair. Oh. I got a follow up. So, after tomorrow night, if the town does not agree with the Article 97, the building's coming down. I mean, that's basically where we're at right now because we don't have a use for it otherwise with that restriction on that parcel, it seems. Okay. I mean, unless, yeah, I mean, that's kind of where we're at right now. And that's a two thirds vote? Two thirds. Uh, yeah, yes, yes, it is a two thirds majority vote. Not, I won't go into the technicalities, but uh, that was something that we explored at length. Right. So, two thirds majority vote. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I was hoping it wouldn't come to that, but yes. I don't know. So, in the, you know, uh, another option is—is is there a way that we can explore? Who is the enforcement arm, and get a get an opinion from somebody at the state level to say, hey, this is what we're trying to do. Uh, we've got conflicting information from attorneys in the same firm, from Tom Reedy. Um, mm -hmm. and, do that. and the other thing too is, is there can we keep half of it in Article 97 and half of it in a conservation restriction so that you know we can do that type of thing on it? I that don't, would be a separate town meeting. But that would be a separate town meeting vote, and we keep going on. Yes. Unless somebody wants to propose that on the floor in the room, we do Well, but they have it. to propose it before it was taken. Yeah. So. Can I ask a question about that, please? Yeah. Was that land given to the town or was it taken by eminent domain? Was it a gift? Gift. It was. Yeah. I don't know. I'm Bottom trying to side. remember. That's, that's what everybody That's did. what it appeared in the deed. I thought it was eminent domain, what I saw. <laughs> there might be. Two. I'm trying to remember. I surveyed the property, and it, it comes to mind that I saw somewhere where part of it may have been taken by eminent domain, mm -hmm. and I'm I, I'm not sure what. If it was, it was probably the piece that was closest to the church. But I'm, I'm not positive of that either. I'll do a little digging and see if I can't come up with an answer because that sounds to me, based on what I'm hearing, that they, that may make a difference, whether it was a gift or whether it was taken. If it was a gift, it sounds like it's locked into 97, but it doesn't, there's nothing that said anything about if it was taken by eminent domain. There was, there was a town meeting vote back in 1917. Uh, and I'll try to look that one up. Because that was, it was framed just Whoever was around in 1917 and what they were doing because it was framed exactly 
in such a way as to trigger the uh, Article 97 protection. Okay. All right. I'll, I'll look and see if I can't find anything. And I'll let you know before tomorrow night if I have any sure. valuable information. That we'll be seeing it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, you will. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So, uh, let's just do fees for building electrical and sealer of weights and measures, permits, and inspections. So we have a uh, fee change recommendations from the building inspector's office for all those various inspection fees. Um, and basically this is just to cover some costs associated with uh, providing the inspection services and keep in, in line with local rates. Um, so, Dee, I don't know if you have something specific to, to yeah. add or say with that. So, I mean, basically, to the oh. reason behind, you know, why we need to do this is, um, you know, going forward, we're looking into the, um, online permitting, which, and we do need a new um, permit program. Ours is just very outdated, and it's just the people that keep it going are not very reliable and um, mostly all the towns now are starting to do the online permits so of course that is going to probably be a little more costly than it has been in the past um, not only that with uh, Tim retiring um, you know it's whether he you know we have just another commissioner come on uh, it's been spoken about combining maybe with another town too and things like that um, and so the commissioners are very hard to come by now because a good majority of them are retiring and um, so you know we're trying to stay in with like all the other towns where you know they're standing right now so for um, the electrical I had gone over with the electrical inspectors and everything and um, they're finding that they have to be going out on more inspections for just one project sometimes than they used to have to. And um, we looked over with some other towns to see what their prices were, and so we um, thought we needed to make some adjustments uh, as far as on the electrical part. Um, plumbing is the same, but the plumbing, in, of course, goes with the Board of Health. He was, so we will work on those with the Board of Health. Um, as far as the building, um, I took it with uh, three of the t uh, three s small towns. Actually, well, Southampton is uh, has about a thousand more people in, in population than we do, um, but then there's the other two. But they're all consistent with the same price, and they're on the permitting program um, too, and. You know, we get a lot of contractors in. They are telling us that our fees are drastically much lower than a lot of other towns. And um, so Tim and I, you know, we went over everything and we decided that it might be just easier for us to kind of stay inconsistent with that, what the other towns are doing. Um, me being on both sides of with the building uh, personally and then working for the town. Um, you know, I know the contractors, when they are coming up with their prices for customers, no matter where they're <coughs> working, um, they uh, sometimes just come up with a, a fee saying it's just, you know, uh, dump fee and permit fee or that they're charging the customers. So the customers never really know. And some of them are probably already overcharged as it is. Um, so. Anyways, we want we like to kind of go towards what the other towns are doing, and um, so what I did is I did up a sheet of just just to give you guys an idea of um, some of the permits I put through this year and what we got for the fee, and then um, if we use the new fees, that will uh, you know that will be what we're going to make which is, you know, for instance, just those fees is seven over oh, seven thousand dollars. So, um, you know, that's uh, the way. The exactly. And right now, um, uh, Tom Quinlan, 
um, Tim's alternate, um, he's been doing the three or fours and one tens um, for Tim because we're just so bombarded this past year with with all the businesses coming in and um, so yeah so then we're and we actually are paying somebody else to go out and do it mm -hmm. so, no, so thank you for all the yeah put a lot of work into it so it's nice to have all this data in front of us too mm -hmm. um, but I think you know it's fair and equitable it's not like we're trying to gouge people by any means right so do we need a motion to, you know? yeah so I make a motion and the three or four and one ten. Yes. If, if we were to raise it to 100 and uh, first or second consecutive inspections, if they needed one or two more, why wouldn't we want to put a price tag on that, on the bigger and, um, actually, construction project? And um, I think on the bottom of one of the, the new fee one. It, yeah, there's a reinspection. Yeah, there is a, a, a $75 yeah. to reinspect. Yeah, but I mean, that. That's for each inspection. Is that covered a three or four in one town, or is that like just for the initial need, building inspection? So if they need multiple visits to do the same inspection, is that right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, basically, That's the only time for the regular all building all inspections, all we never have gone back except if we catch somebody, which I patrol around a lot, and I know who I give permits to and who I don't, or haven't gotten one. So. Um, I do make sure that they get doubled the fee, mm -hmm. and uh, a majority of the contractors they that have done this they know better. Yeah. So, um, but it, sometimes it is hard to when they're going out and for Tim to kind of keep track of it all. Um, that's why this way with the new online permitting, mm -hmm. it's also mobile on his phone, and so he can right then there say. You weren't. You didn't show up for this, or I have to come back out, and we can put the fee right back in there at that point. The additional. The additional, yes. But the other towns are already charging a hundred for the building and a hundred for the fire, um, for the annual inspections, and so we feel that we need to bring them up with that too. So, motion to accept the recommendations that um, BB's presented this evening. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 And if we were looking to start it like January, January yeah, 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 because uh, once we get the permitting program, we want the fees set already. So, because they have to put it into that program, to, you know, to make it online. Yeah. So. No, thank you. Very detailed. Uh, shows all your. You know background information and everything so thank you thank you Great. and i'll be in december 31st to get all my permits <laughs> <laughs> oh and let's just keep hoping that it gets better yeah, yeah. Right. soon okay yeah all right well, thank you Thanks, thank you you know yeah 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 one more thing maybe we have a start thinking about another in-house working out Somebody's capable of going to get the license and, and whatever they need to do it. We've had them in the past for a long time. Don't you want regionalization, John? You're always talking about regionalization. I, I do. <laughs> this I is do. a regionalized <laughs> service, and you want I to bring do. it in house. I do, but, but the amount that we have in town, is it really feasible? Yeah. I think it would be who, who. Where yeah. would, what department would have the extra yes. resources to do that would be the trick. Yeah. I think we should always look at how we're delivering a service. Yeah. No, I and I don't know. 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 We have a human resources director appointment tonight. Excited to announce. I don't know if one of you from the committee want to introduce Me? Mr. O'Connor. All right. So we had a committee that was uh, Chief Mason, uh, Joyce, myself, uh, Linda, and Joan from the treasurer's office. And so we had 33, 34, I think it was, um, applications for the position. And uh, we whittled it down to one, uh, Mr. Edward O'Connor. Uh, is our uh, recommendation for the human resources director position for the town and he'll be coming to us from uh, Worcester 
and he's currently the uh, veteran service officer for the city of Worcester and uh, army officer, veteran, all of the above. Well educated and experienced, so uh, I don't know if you want to say anything, but. Um, no, I just, I appreciate the appointment. Um, I applied because my children live only 20 minutes away. And so uh, the toll for Worcester to, to them has been a little more taxing than I thought it would have been. So I'm very excited to be closer to my kids again. And uh, I'm originally a personnelist. The uh, HR, th uh, the veteran services thing just kind of, I fell into it on accident, I guess. It sounded interesting and I really enjoyed it. But uh, I'm really glad to get back to my roots in HR. And I think it's a very exciting opportunity. Can you just explain to them what your HR background is, not just um, oh, sure, not, not yeah. just that you're a veterans <laughs> agent. I mean, we appreciate that. Um, so uh, I had managed HR for a variety of uh, military organizations. Um, I've had medical, logistics, military police, um, transportation. Um, the federal government's unionized, so even when I was a federal government civilian. Um, still managing HR, you know, dealing. Uh, I'm, the only thing I really haven't been too involved in is the collective bargaining process, but uh, I'm very familiar with collective bargaining agreements and you know, making sure people get their breaks and lunches on time. So I, I can bring a lot of that to the town. Also, some uh, modernization, uh, human resources systems, you know, maybe some comp analysis. Is, I've really kind of had the the breadth of it, um, you know, unemployment claims and. Uh, perhaps an accident, uh, equal opportunity, and also um, lost my train of thought. But uh, yeah, I've kind of been uh, a little bit of everywhere, and I, I think I can bring that to the town, and I think it'll serve you well. So. Great. And when do you think you can start? I, you know. uh, I have a contract floating around out there. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, Second of December is, is, is on there. So, is on there, OK. Um, you know, barring uh, approval, I'll inform my employer tomorrow. Great. Mm -hmm. Great. Uh, so I have a motion to appoint. I'll make a motion to appoint Ed O'Connor. Thank you very much. Thank you. You have no idea how excited I am. <laughs> <laughs> second <Yeah>. this motion. <laughs> yeah. Long time to yeah. come right yeah. yeah. Okay. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Congratulations. Congratulations. Oh, and you get to do the template, so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I actually have contact information for you. I happen to be meeting with the human resource person from South Hadley. Oh, excellent. And she found out that you were getting hired. She said that there's actually a group of HR professionals from municipalities that she works with, and she's hoping that you will join immediately. And then we can't shake your hands now. I don't want to just have you. The board comes on for you. And we haven't met before, but Ed, nice to, meet James, you. nice to meet you. Sure. Okay. Why don't we, you guys good for a special town meeting? Or are we good? We're good. Okay. So let's do special town meeting review and final decisions. Um, uh, <laughs> it's over there, it's over here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Did you make Joyce mad? <laughs> you just wait. No, I'm not aware just of it. <laughs> uh, all right, so uh, do we have any recommendations from the Finance Committee on anything tonight? Or so did you attend? Let's talk about the big picture a little bit. Um, we have, uh, we have an annual town meeting where we passed a balanced budget. On the you know, interim between May and November, we added to that budget by um, uh, uh, funding some of the transitions in three departments where we had people were, um, moving on and getting new people in. We were able to uh, redeploy some savings and debt and because of our AAA bond rating. Uh, reorganization, DPW, and, and a number of other costs that we incurred. Um, we intended to fix that at the uh, fall town meeting using free cash and certified enterprise reserves. Uh, at this point, we do not have free cash and certified. Uh, we do not have enterprise fund uh, reserves certified. So I've reoriented the budget in order to accomplish all the things that we said that we would be spending money on at the annual town meeting, close to taking care of 
the issues that have arisen in the meantime. Uh, and I think we've done this in such a way that in the big picture we can go from now on to annual town meeting and pass the budget with no need to return and fix it using certified free cash and enterprise reserves. So going from essentially the town doing two budgets per year, springtime, fall time, to just one budget per year and freeing up the organization to do the capacity to work on other issues that we have plenty of uh, we have part, plenty of work to attend to. So I think that's the big picture of where we are. So uh, we funded everything. Uh, judicious drawdown on reserves with the express intention that when we do have our free cash certified, that we replenish those uh, reserves. Uh, and that we have had to make one small adjustment in the capital plan, the server for the, um, for Hadley Media has got to be deferred for a few months. Other than that, we can afford the whole thing. Okay. Sounds good. Do we, what it is. do we want to vote on articles one and two then? Our recommendation. Is there any reason? In that case, so David, did you have um, the finance committee or somebody is double checked just to make sure everything floats and all that good stuff? Yeah. So we, uh, when, when it became increasingly clear to me that we were not going to have certified free cash, I did go to the fi um, finance committee on October 29th and had them review the whole plan. They endorsed the, the alternative budget. Uh, I also presented this information to the financial management team on October 30th. They're not a voting body, but they asked some questions and made some adjustments. Uh, the assessors, the treasurer, and I have gone over these numbers many times in order to make sure that uh, they will work. They add up. They yeah, add I up. I mean, literally, I just meant, like, mechanically. Oh, yeah. Because yeah. you've had to change them so many times, you know. Yeah, so, look, okay. look at these bloodshot eyes. <laughs> <laughs> It was here very late last night. I can attest to that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, um, significant changes that I can point to very quickly is Article 4, we're going to have to pass over because that's the transfer of free cash. We don't have it. Article 5, the capital article, we can do everything except for the uh, server for Hadley Media, and we'll just defer that to the to the uh, uh, springtime, and I did talk to the department head about that. That's the entire equipment line there? Yeah, the 15,000. Um, David, Phil, and I work on the conservation restriction on Article 7, and we have that as a handout. It's been uh, finalized with our lawyers. Kestrel's good with it. Um, our subcommittee is good with it, so we should be all set. Great. Article 7 would be on uh, page 30. And um, the, the rest of the articles? Basically the same. All the same. Yeah, what happened with the health insurance side? Uh, we're going to have to take that out of the stabilization. I was hoping to be able to squeeze, raise an appropriate by $25,000, and it simply won't work. So again, we're, gonna, we're obligated to do this. We will take it out of stabilization. We commit to replenishing stabilization. Mm -hmm. That's what it says there. Okay. Yeah. So we're making a virtue out of necessity here. <laughs> Okay. Do we want to vote on articles one and two? Did that answer your question there? Yeah, I just want yeah, to make sure. Yeah. I, I, the last thing we want. <laughs> we've been around long enough. Oh, yeah. We've been <laughs> triggering uh, numbers. On the, the only one I had a question on here, Dave, is page three. Table A1. It's on page three, and then it's on page four. And um, there are two different tables. Yeah, so page three. Um, four looks more correct than three. I just 
page three will be the article as it was posted. Okay. Uh, and page okay. four. Is, um, the article as is. Article as it's moved. It okay. will be moved. Okay. All right, well, I'll make a motion that we approve articles one and two is reconstructed. Second. Uh, does anybody want to vote them separately or are we fine voting them together? Together. Together. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. So that's five zero zero on one and two? Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Imagine that, right? So that's only, yeah, that's only $5,000 off of it. Yeah, it's just where the money comes from, yeah. Yeah, it's just the money sources. That's all. It's just where the drop in the bucket. Yeah. Well, that's nothing. I mean, annually, you were usually fighting over 20 or 30,000 years. Yeah. So that's all we had to vote on, with those two. Yeah, I think we voted on everything else. We did. Uh, yeah. Okay. Anything else regarding the special town meeting? Article 5. Each motion is going to be voted on individually, correct? So each motion will be voted on individually. In order to speed this up, we have a, a handout with the entire motion printed out. So each motion that you will be reading, Randy, will be referring to the handout. Yeah. And I don't know, this one, if we just want you to read the motions and us vote on it, as opposed to me getting up, describing each one, and then sitting down and having you list the motion, how we want to handle that. What page are you on? Uh, 11. All right, so we all know that if people are depending on their handouts, that's going to take longer for them to look at it and understand. I think if we do this the way that it always is done, you can just stand right next to me. Okay. Don't go sit back down. And okay. we just go mm -hmm. through it. I think it's it's better to explain it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, I think I'm going to tag team with uh, Christian. Okay. Mm -hmm. Fine with me. All right. Yeah. The three musketeers there. That's going to be fun. <laughs> Again, whatever it takes. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> okay. okay. Um, so. Just some comments that when we get our free cash, we have to think about that as a two-year installment of free cash because we won't get much the next year. So we've got to make it do, uh, do double duty. Um, and we have to be a little bit, bit careful about uh, the spending in the future. And the name of the game is going to be increasing revenues. Anything that we can do to increase revenues is going to help us uh, through the, the transition of FY 2021 and 2022. Do we want to um, reset our policy for a year that we keep our free cash at 150000 or something like that as a cushion since we are going to have to keep that for a two year time period rather than the 75 that we've been working on or do you want to just leave it or? Can I have a little bit of time to work on that? Sure. Or, but yes. Yeah, so I think absolutely we need to revisit that uh, free cash policy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Anything else? Randy, Do we know who town council will be tomorrow evening? David Jenkins. And he, is he from? He's from KP Law. KP Law. Okay. And are we having any distinguished guests that we are aware of? Dan Carrier. Scheduled. Um, scheduled distinguished guests. Somebody scheduled. Okay. <coughs> so if is, is Barry Roberts going to be there to speak on? <coughs> Excuse me. So regarding Article 17, um, I believe it's appropriate for Mr. <coughs> Reedy to speak to the issue. I got an email from him this afternoon, and he wondered if he and Barry Roberts could speak, and I told him I would prefer he speak. And if anybody had any questions for Mr. Roberts, so uh, what I intend to do is get uh, approval from town meeting to allow Mr. Reedy to speak mm -hmm. and Mr. Roberts to be able to answer questions if appropriate. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. As a point of information, Mr. Reedy is 
classified as a special municipal employee by the town of Hadley. I think that may only apply when he's actually representing the town of Hadley. Okay, I was just um, going to say, if he's, if he's so rep representing a private party, yeah, we're so going to treat him as just a non like non registered guest, yeah. Or, yeah. guest whatever. Yes, mm -hmm. okay. Um, uh, uh, Jane had a question real quick and then. For a distinguished guest, would you please introduce our new director? I was going to do that. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Christian is going to do his state of the town, so he'll have you come. Has uh, the school superintendent reached out to you about a, uh, an address to the town prior to the capital article, Article 5? Oh, right. No. Right. All right. I think they, my discussion with them was they didn't want to bring that up right now. They didn't want to bring it up. Right. Oh, really? I guess. Oh, I we're gonna... As far as I know, unless I hear otherwise, it was going to be more, I haven't heard, I guess. If it's, I guess it's up to the school committee, and I haven't heard. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's where it was left. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Did? I think so. We're going to we're going to meet before the meeting tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. yeah we posted at six. Six here. We'll, we'll be meeting at six o'clock. Yeah. Do we need to? We just did it all. Here. Yeah. You don't have to come, Joyce. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm here before, I'm here before you are any day. So. <laughs> got you beat by. Just a long don't be late for town meeting, John. <laughs> <laughs> I got you beat by a long shot. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Do you need anything from us that we haven't given you at this point? Not that I'm aware of. All right. Uh, we'll see what happens when I wake up at 4 o'clock tomorrow <laughs> and start thinking about it. I'll, exactly. Yeah. Usually well, about 6 o'clock in here, that's when the heat starts coming out. <laughs> what if this happens? What if that happens? Yep. <laughs> yep. So, yeah, no, I think I've cool. got everything that I need. Yeah. Uh, we'll see what happens. Great. All right. Put your town meeting close on and come along. Here you yep. go. <laughs> yep. All right. So uh, next item is liquor license change administrative charges. And this was, Jennifer, you wanted to, you suggested we do one, do a fee associated with processing changes to existing liquor licenses, such as change of manager, change of corporate ownership, etc. Yes. Yeah, that's basically the gist of it. That's the gist of it. Um, Y'all had asked to see sort of what other towns were doing. I sent out a request to all the licensing um, coordinators in the state. Not everybody responded, but it is an incredibly busy time of year for us. Mm -hmm. um, I also had conversations with Amherst and Northampton because they are the closest towns to us. Mm -hmm. um, Northampton's char only charges $25, and she said, are you kidding me? I'm charging more. She's taking it to her licensing commission, um, what I showed her. Mm -hmm. um, Amherst is doing, as you know, a major reorganization of their government, mm -hmm. and sort of after speaking to their new licensing uh, coordinator, he has said that he uh, is taking it to have theirs increased as well. Um, it's sort of a, a split, I, I found, Either they don't, people don't charge, or it's a hundred dollars. Um, was sort of my sort of takeaway, and a hundred dollars is what I was asking. I wanted to ask you all to consider increasing the amount of hours I spend on processing the change. It is significant. Also, David and Chief Mason both also typically review changes, especially for managers and things like that. So there's a lot of people touching these reviewing them and then there's the actual just processing of the paperwork for a total of about four hours mm -hmm. so that's where I sort of came up with the, the the amount and it turns out that it's on par truly with other people yeah and these are mostly um, the corporate chains that are changing managers on a routine basis right like the Whole Foods and the you know <laughs> we had some one Texas two, two license changes in the past like two months right it, yeah, and that was and that yeah. sort of that's what sort of did this is because I spent hours not even the four hours I spent hours on the phone with Texas Red House because their documentation wasn't right and that was when you know the ABCC gets their two hundred dollars for the change 
but we're, you know, I'm just doing this and peddling, you know, trying to get them to respond to things, and, it, and it's not recouping any of my time and so your cost for the town. Yeah, but typically you don't see the small mom and pops, the local businesses doing changes during the year, just the renewals, right? Like, you know, um, Liquors 44 did change a manager, but he okay. literally changed to his manager, okay. who's been his long-term manager. Mm -hmm. um, I don't foresee that changing. Um, pins, which again, they're semi-local. Um, but yeah, it's the big, big businesses. Chipotle, Texas Roadhouse, Applebee's, the, the big guys are the ones who change constantly. They're doing business. Yeah, I, I mean, it seems uh, like a great idea to me and, uh, you know, I think we should do it, so. Motion to approve the recommendations from our licensing coordinator. Second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. That's great. Looks like other towns are looking for some feedback on what we do as well, oh, so. I good. left them on there so you could see how many yeah. people yeah. are like, wait. Yeah. Hey. yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, so the rating, why not? The process yeah. of <laughs> yeah. I put that on there. I thought, David, you had asked about that when we did the bottle of brew. Mm -hmm. They're actually thinking about charging a whole year's fee for the transfer, and that might be something to readdress yeah, in the future. Yeah, at some point. Yeah. Well, at least we're going to start with one year. Mm -hmm. Yep. All right. Executive session minutes review. My computer allows. Um, yeah, there is a list here of executive session minutes to approve. It goes from March 8, 2017 through September 25th, 2019. I don't know if we want to go through this list individually. Um, I don't know if let everybody's me, gotten a chance to review it. Let me just summarize it. it. It's, yeah. uh, these are executive sessions. Um, the issue is either open or closed if it's litig litigation. Um, if it's contract negotiations, uh, the issue is either open or closed. And uh, the rest are personnel issues, which are always closed. Um, or uh, I should say it this way, it's more, it's always a situation where you can't release those on executive sessions. So litigation oh, that's closed we can release contract negotiations that are closed we can release and everything else has to be withheld okay. i thought we wanted to do this like once a year that was the only point i was trying to make the yeah. law requires that I we do it twice a year and we've been as you can see we're behind I mean, once a year is fair, you know yeah. Yeah, we're supposed to do it twice yeah yeah motion to approve the list as recommended second all those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. We have Senior Center Library and Fire Substation updates. Uh, Joyce, would you like to go first for Fire Substation? Sure. Fine with me. So we met yesterday. Um, we have we had our little after groundbreaking because we've already done quite a fair amount of uh, things up there already. We've um, Completed the under slab utilities, completed the slab on grade. Uh, we've started the rough framing. We've got the uh, um, pipes going underground there for the uh, heat in the, uh, in the garage bay area. Um, we actually have a binder um, course has been put on this week already, so that's all set for this year until permanent paving next year. They are going to wait until spring. They are going to. They just did the basic one right now. Yeah, so they did do that. Um, uh, financial update looks great. Uh, we're on track. We're not over budget. And we have a contingency of $660,633,000, our remaining balance after approved pending issues. So we're, we're on track and we're very much happy with the work that's been done with everybody so far. Carl's Excavating has done a great job for us and we're very happy with them. Nice. Okay. Um, uh, library. You want to do library? Yeah, sure. um, library, uh, site work you can see is continuing, uh, same types of 
things going on, you know, putting in conduits under underneath and all of that. Um, I think the main focus really has been, and, and from a financial standpoint, um, I think everybody got the, the updated report, but from a financial standpoint, uh, everything is steady as you go. We haven't had any change orders, at least not yet. Um, and the focus of the discussions right now are on uh, interior uh, work, you know, getting, getting to work on that and you know, making some final decisions relative to that. And um, so, oh, then um, fundraising. So fundraising, uh, there's a lot of emphasis on that. Um, and as Christian had mentioned the last time we talked about it, there's been a big push to try to find a way to get the solar panels done. So there has been some movement with um, private individuals coming forward. Um, so there's, that's where a lot of things going in right now, and seeing if we get some outside dollars into the project. They're a couple of weeks behind, but they're trying to catch up, and hopefully they're going to get the base built down on the foundation also. Mm -hmm. for it. it looks like it's uh, what they're talking about is a few days before Thanksgiving. Yeah. Yeah, I think yeah. last weekend. Are they doing the, the library and the senior center at the same time, paving? I don't know. I don't know either. I, I didn't ask either one of them, but they said they're both prepared to get the base in. Mm -hmm. uh, all the piping's in. I I think they said they're going to try to go to this week or first to next week. Next week, yeah. And Jane, the senior center, do you want to give an update to the construction and then we have a change order? I can mention that. So I don't know. Construction continues. Things You don't see a lot of changes now because it's all inside, inside with duct work and piping and wiring and everything. But it's moving along on schedule. Everybody's really excited to see a building that looks like a building. Mm -hmm. We're all very happy. Great. And then we have one change order here. Uh, we talked about this briefly, I believe, last week, but it's for these uh, barn doors. It's for $2,679.88. It's change, uh, proposed change order number 17. And it is to put in um, these barn doors to access the HVAC and other utility equipment that are in the attic of one part of the building. There's, it's, you know, it's an attic, so there's no real easy way to get mechanical equipment in and out of there. But with these barn doors, you can open it up and get access to that equipment in the need it needs servicing or replacement, um, pull it out and put it back in. Originally in the design, it was a a plug, let's say, for lack of a better word, that would have to be removed by a larger piece of equipment. Now it's just these doors that open and close and would be sealed most of the time. Well, so the plug thought was you're going to be putting a piece of equipment in or out anyway, and so you're going to have the larger equipment there that could take this door off. But the contractor pointed out that it really, there were going to be times when you wanted to have it closed when you weren't finished working up there through that access and making it hinged as opposed to one piece removable was well, a better solution. Is it insulated and Oh yes. All yeah. that? It's because yeah. you know, plugs are usually easier to insulate than a metal door that's it's insulated. Yeah, actually Gary Gary was the one that caught this a couple months ago. Gary Bird? Yeah. It's access into the attic. The attic yeah. is where all the equipment is. Okay, so it doesn't need to be necessarily insulated does it typically attics i mean the the walls of a house up in the attic are not yeah. insulated so i don't think it's a big deal if it is or not unless they're trying to protect the some equipment. type of minimal weatherproofing i mean i'm sure they have something that they yeah, i don't know if there's a like drawing or sketch or anything on there yeah yeah so uh i don't know I'm going to make a motion to approve PCO 17. Second. Second. <laughs> all those in favor? Aye. 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 OK, that's all we have for that. And uh, town administrative report, David. OK. All right, so our uh, IT grant, uh, that this project is substantially complete on uh, Friday morning. I'm going to scan all the documents for the special town meeting and to that is my plunge into that pool. Oh wow. Can we get Hadley Media there? 
Most of the call the New York Times. Just, just running through this very quickly. So the affordable housing um, study uh, grant. Uh, we are actually going to have a meeting tomorrow at midday in order to review the draft report that Pioneer Valley Planning Commission has put together in order to address strategies for enhancing uh, uh, affordable housing in the town of Hadley. Uh, so that project is moving along very nicely. Uh, the IT upgrade, I met with uh, the school department IT director, uh, Mr. David uh, Olson, uh, and uh, Jennifer was at, with that meeting and we talked about uh, the possibility of sharing services. So we will develop a proposal and present that as part of the FY 2021 budget process. Our municipal vulnerability preparedness grant, uh, we had to push the uh, community work session back uh, to December 10th because of uh, the vendor wasn't ready, but uh, I don't think we can delay this one any further. So, but that'll happen on December 10th and we'll get the, the word out to all the departments and stakeholders on that. Capital asset study is nearly complete. Um, the DLT solar grant, uh, we're working with Pioneer Valley Planning Commission again in order to develop a municipal guidebook Contain, containing best management practices relating to large-scale solar developments. Uh, and that work is progressing uh, in an orderly way. On Friday last, we had a meeting with uh, Senator Comerford, Representative Carey, and Representative Blay, and about 90 other municipal officials from Western Massachusetts to talk about infrastructure, sewer water, storm water, uh, and in particular, the Greenfield Anaerobic Digester was featured in that forum. Uh, had a chance to talk to Marla Warner, who was the main presenter on that issue. And he and I are going to get together and talk about uh, Hadley's future involvement uh, with that project. Stormwater uh, Permit MS4, we are looking to PVPC to continue working on the next regional implementation grant application in order to get us through the next year of this, uh, this requirement. Uh, Route 9 widening. Uh, we just got an update from MassDOT that they will submit the 75% complete plans for the reconstruction of Route 9 from Middle Street to South Maple Street. Um, a new project manager has been assigned, Mr. Reardon. Uh, the next steps are environmental permitting, right-of-way acquisitions, and final cost estimate development. So that project is moving forward. It will be a, a big project. MassWorks grant, bad news. We applied for $200,000 for the West Street Common Roadways. We did not receive that grant. Um, there were 92 applications totaling $223 million, so we were up against some pretty stiff competition. Uh, this is a grant that we're eligible to apply for once every three years. So my recommendation is rather than try to reapply for this particular group, uh, project, that we start focusing on using that uh, grant, uh, next grant application on the Route 9 widening project and all the infrastructure with that. Uh, we're going to need a lot of expert help on that one because that's a major application. Electronic permitting, DD referred to it briefly. We've taken a look at three vendors. Uh, we're planning on doing uh, for an integrated uh, uh, permitting process that would uh, bring all the departments together that issued uh, permits and be able to coordinate this. Right now we have a weekly meeting Tuesdays at 1 o'clock in order to coordinate. This can be done with uh, technology and software. Uh, with, we have tentatively a site visit scheduled for Williamstown on November 15th. Uh, and we'll come back with a recommendation as to which of these software platforms. FY 2020 revenues for the first quarter are meeting our expectations. Um, 
and our expenses are also trending very closely with our expectations, so it looks good for the first three months of the year. Financial management team uh, had a meeting on the 30th, and they reviewed the accounting services, um, alternative funding strategies for a special town meeting. Uh, they were going to look at the FY2021 projected revenues uh, and they were going to look at exploring better models for assessing administrative charges to the enterprise funds. They had a lot on their plate. They only got through half their agenda, so they'll be rescheduling to address some of the other issues. Uh, the audit, we're going to have to wait until we get that free cash certified uh, in order for us to move forward on that. Uh, special town meeting, we just had the, that discussion. Human Resources Director, we had that discussion. Accounting, um, we know that Bay State Municipal Accounting Group is going to be closing in December. Uh, we'll be meeting with Pioneer Valley Planning Commission next week in order to talk about uh, going into their regional accounting service in order to uh, make sure that we have continuity with accounting there. Uh, there are other options that are on the table and we'll continue exploring those. Tomorrow, special town meeting. Come to the special town meeting and make your voice and vote count. November 13th, we'll have the tax classification hearing. November 15th, we'll uh, submit the tax rate to the Department of Revenue. November 23rd, Hadley Mothers Club will have their holiday fair. November 30th, there's the Hadley Celebration of Lights. Are there okay. any questions? You forgot turkey. Thanksgiving. Yeah. <laughs> First, turkey dates everything. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't advertise uh, Halloween either, so. No, mm -hmm. this is true. We that was too controversial this year. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> That's the same thing. Any announcements? I do have a few, I think, tonight. Or not. You know, but anyway, I wanted to do a congratulatory uh, to Liam Higgins. Um, he graduated from the Call Volunteer Firefighter Recruit Training Program in Springfield uh, last week. They had a ceremony. Um, he did receive a congratulatory from uh, Dan Carey also. Um, and what's nice about it is he's staying here in Hadley right now and he's going to be a part of our call force. So uh, congratulations to uh, Liam and uh, good luck and please stay with us for a while. Um, I unfortunately have a few passings um, this past month um, and a, which is sad it goes from the one of our elders to a younger person and um, uh, our, our condolences to all the families um, one is to Lakotia uh, Dudkevich's family we are sincerely sorry on her passing Walter Hoffman he was a lieutenant in the Amherst Fire Department um, for a number of years um, Henry Malik has lived in town his whole life, and then uh, sad that David Chamura has passed away. And uh, very sorry to all everyone's families and friends from the select board. Great. Thank you. Got one. Any other announcements? Um, the Shade Tree Committee is uh, having their town Arbor Day event November 16th on the common by the bike path is where the event's going to be. Smokey the Bear will be there, some other activities, and they're planting the first of their trees on the uh, town tree belt. Where'd you get the outfit? I, I'm not wearing the outfit, <laughs> trust me. <laughs> that's, so, the state, that's, that's someone from the state warning. is coming. Oh, really? <laughs> nice. What about Halloween? <laughs> and uh, I, I believe next Wednesday we'll be making a proclamation in regard to yeah. the Hadley Tree Planting Day as well, but good to get that word out. Yep. You know, over a week in advance instead yeah. of three days in advance. It's so. yeah, just a proclamation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, anything else? All set? Okay. We were supposed to have executive session tonight. That is not happening tonight. So we are going to make a motion to adjourn. Second. So moved. All those in favor? Aye. 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 See you all tomorrow. Thank you. See you all tomorrow. tomorrow.